Welcome to Crucial Conversations. I'm Peter. And I'm Kevin. And we're back. We're back. S- as such as it is. We've got some fun new gear that we're testing out, so we're seeing how that works. But we kind of just wanted to take a opportunity to share about what we're going to be doing with the podcast in the near future and what our plans are and what we want to do. So, Kevin, you start by telling our listeners, because there, there's more than one. Hopefully. <laughs> so we've we've been gone um, from podcasting, but we've been busy doing other things. And so as we talked about more podcast episodes, we really returned to where we were a while ago, which is back to hermeneutics. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot going on in our world, a lot going on in our lives, a lot going on in our church body. And the more we talk and the more we interact with people that we know and people online, and I guess people we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are some people out there that we don't know. That we don't know. Um, some that might not be real people that are saying things. But the more we interact with everyone and the more we, we watch people and churches and congregations and pastors and friends deal with issues we, we are continuing to talk about hermeneutics more and more, and it seems that it really is continuing to be of utmost importance to discuss hermeneutics and the importance of how to read the Bible, mm-hmm. how to interpret the Bible, how to understand the Bible. And we wanted to revisit not necessarily the theory of hermeneutics, but some of the practical realities of hermeneutics as we podcast. And the white noise went away. I think I figured it out. Oh, that sounds so nice now. So hopefully it sounds better. So it does to us, which we don't know what you guys hear. This is new gear. We're learning things about it. <laughs> we're pressing we're pressing buttons if as we talk. There's no microphone plugged into the input. Turn the input down. Just maybe mute that input. Hey, I like that. So as we discuss hermeneutics, it occurred to me that that a lot of what we talked about in our previous hermeneutics episodes was all very good, um, but but a lot of it was very theo- theoretical, mm-hmm. and a lot of it used words that may or may not <laughs> always make sense. Well, which it, which is fine. Again, I'm not. I don't want to. There's this. Yeah, I think what we what we did before was we kind of laid the foundation of how we try to do hermeneutics, what our goal is in doing it, and so if. In future episodes, as we're talking about it, people are like, okay, hold on. What's your actual process for doing this? And I want to dig deeper. Well, that's kind of what we did. We we laid that out in uh, six or eight episodes. I forget how many it was exactly. Where we laid out, here's our actual process, how we think through these things. I think that was the value of our series on Christology first, and then the series on hermeneutics, which builds on that one. And now as we move into okay, practically in my day-to-day life, what does this look like? What does this mean? Um, How do we do this? That's kind of where we're going. Because I think part of our conversation, Kevin, has been what do we think we can talk about that might be useful to other people, (laughs) if that's a way to phrase it. It's like Because there's lots of good podcasts out there. There's lots of good things going on, other people talking about it. And we're trying to think, well, if we're going to, talk in the microphone for half an hour, for 45 minutes, an hour. If we're going to have guests on talking with us, which with this new gear, we can do that. We can do that easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier. We've got extra microphones now for people in the same room, and we can plug phones in and all that. So uh, this is thanks to a grant from Village Lutheran Church. If you happen to be uh, aware of my congregation, they gave us a mission grant for this gear. So Thanks, Village. Thank you. It's awesome. It's the other reason we're getting back into podcasting. We actually have gear now. <laughs> yeah. It's like we, we've kind of so, run out of excuses other yeah. than the time one. The time one is still so, there. So lest we waste your time as right. listening. Um, what we really are talking about is in hermeneutics is we want to really spend some time in the scriptures themselves and not just talking about theoretically how to read text, but actually reading some text together, maybe discussing how people read these texts and then how the church has historically read them and what we mean by a Christological hermeneutic 
uh, what we mean by reading with integrity of the text, reading with um, a coherence idea that this is one long story told by the same author um, with the same goal. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? Um, if you want to, if you want to see a little bit of how we did this or how I do it, we, I just finished a series on Sunday school stories on Tuesday night Bible study. Yeah. The Tuesday night Bible study we so, have on our YouTube channel. And before that we talked about parables. And so what I try to do in both those, those little, um, series of, of classes was to kind of implement some of these or all of these ideas of hermeneutics when we read some difficult passages like parables. Mm -hmm. How do we read them Christologically? Um, how do we read this with integrity? How do we read them as part of a, a large story? And same thing with the Sunday school stories. When I, when we look back to the, to the things that we learned as children from Sunday school, we probably didn't learn them as Christologically as we probably should have. <laughs> um, so we went back and we spent some time looking at some of the good old Bible stories and trying to read them as God intends, which is to draw our eyes to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we want to continue to talk about is there's a lot going on in our world in which people are quoting Bible passages in order to support viewpoints, in order to um, drive programs or drive initiatives or drive um, action. Mm -hmm. And as we listen to those things and as we watch other people speak about concerns, and we watch the scriptures they, they quote, not just the, the, the very passages themselves, but how they quote them and how and why they quote them. Um, that really is the issue of hermeneutics. It's not just finding a Bible passage and saying, I like these words, they seem mm -hmm. to support what I'm doing, let's quote it. That is all hermeneutics. Sure. And that's exactly the, the practical application of all these theoretical ideas. Um, so when I open my Bible and I read it, I'm doing that with intent, um, and we believe that the Bible has intent for its reader. So what we are trying to do in hermeneutics is is to not um, place an idea upon Scripture and say, I think it should be about Jesus, so let's make it all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Instead, what we're, we're advocating is that God revealed his word to us for a purpose, for a reason, with intent. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit inspired these writers to write these words, yes, in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, yes, a long time ago. Um, but he, he wrote these, he inspired men to write these words, and there's intent behind that from God. The Holy Spirit inspired it for a reason, for a goal, for a purpose. And the, the goal of a faithful reading of Scripture is to read that word according to the will of God to match our intent to God's intent. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a very important thing to say it because we don't read the scripture in order to fulfill our intent. Yeah. Or in order to fulfill our um, programs or our ideas or our pet projects. <laughs> um, this is definitely a danger. Or our academia. political party. Our political parties, which yep. is definitely a danger online these days. Yep. Um, so... That's kind of this, the, the whole practical reality of hermeneutics is when I open God's word, we never forget that it's not my word, but it's God's word. Mm -hmm. And that means not only did he inspire it, but he also has a desire for us to read it according to his will. And that means that we approach scripture with a great humility, that we, we never open this book to see it as a tool for me to use. But instead we read this book because they are God's words to us. They so, are, it is the very word of God to reveal what God desires to be revealed. So what this might look like in, in future episodes is, say we're going to handle um, a contemporary thing going on. There's a quote that's out there, a Bible verse that was used, uh, some theological terminology, we're actually not going to start with, hey, here's this thing that so-and-so said, let's talk about it. Instead, we're going we're gonna to say, okay, let's go to Scripture, and here's the subject that was mentioned. Here's the Bible verse that was talked about. We're going to go and study that first. So the first part of the podcast might be Bible study, where we're actually going through, here's what Scripture says about 
this subject. Here's that verse in context. Um, and then, hey, we heard this used over on this here. Did they use that properly? Is their hermeneutic the same? Were they speaking about it in the same way that Scripture speaks about it? Were they using that Bible verse, that phrase, that particular word in the same way that God uses it with the same intent that God uses it? And I think it's it might be a little bit different because I think very often it's like, here's this shocking statement that was made out there. We're probably not going to start off any of our episodes with a shocking statement. We're going to be like, well, hey guys, let's do a Bible study. Hopefully it's shocking and it's non-shockingness. <laughs> right. <laughs> by the time we mention, oh, and by the way, here's kind of what well, I made think, us think of doing this. I think it's that this quote over here. As we as we talk about you know the process, I think part of the thing that we're hopefully going to help all of us wrestle with is that it probably is very difficult to start with an agenda and find scripture to support that mm. and still remain faithful to the goal of scripture. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's a lot of what hermeneutics kind of helps us to avoid is the idea that I've got a wonderful idea. I've got to find the place where God agrees with me <laughs> so I can quote it to you to convince you that I'm right. Here's my life's motto. Yeah. Here's what I want my life to be about. Hey, I'm going to go find a Bible verse that I can right. put up on my mirror and say so, every day that matches right. my desire for my life. Yeah, or or even here's my theological stance. I want to find Bible verses that prove I'm right. Um, as as right as that might sound, that's actually mm-hmm. backwards. That's that's the bad part of proof texting. Right. That right is there. <laughs> that is where you'll hear pastors say, "Oh, we don't proof text," and that's what they mean. Is mm-hmm. that we don't we don't start with a philosophical or even an intellectual premise, and then say, I've got to find passages to back me up. Here's my list of Bible verses that prove that I'm smart. Mm-hmm. That's proof texting. That's that's using the Bible. And this is something I want to address real proof briefly. Proof texting is a hermeneutic, by the way. It is a hermeneutic. It's a bad one, though. Well, it, it can be a bad <laughs> it's one. It's usually I think a bad one. <laughs> that's one thing I think we want to be careful about is, is necessarily labeling every hermeneutic as good or bad. Sure. Um, even bad hermeneutics have something good in them. And I think that's something we want to affirm in this, is that it's good when people look at the Bible as a source of truth. They're actually opening the Bible to find truth. And yeah, what does God is, say about this? This is good. Oh. This is what we want to affirm. You're starting to ask the right question if right. you're asking, what does God say about this? Or he's at least going to the right source. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of different things that I just want to briefly address before we get into specifics, probably next time we podcast. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> There's kind of two ways to go about this that are kind of both lead. They sound good, but they lead to like bad ideas. And the one thing is to see the Bible as too divine. And this is going to sound a little weird to everybody. I want you to think this through with me for a second. If we see the Bible as being kind of golden words that are shimmering and shining, and you can hear all those echoing every time you read them, and kind of fell out of the sky with no human interaction. It's just God's word directly to us. What that ends up doing is is making us think that we can pull any phrase from Scripture and apply it to any situation equally. It's See, like using we, every verse as if it's a proverb that stands on its own. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's a danger when we see the Bible as just kind of this direct revelation from God to me. Probably the most common use of that is the, I can do all things through right. Christ who so, strengthens me. Well, it, any bumper sticker verse really yeah. ends up being <laughs> there's it's a contextual. Um, it's not as though anybody actually wrote this at any time in history. It's just God's word to me. Mm. And and if you really think that through, that's that's actually discounting the human reality of Scripture. That God inspired these words through human authors at a certain time. And Ironically, it might also discount the divine inspiration of it because you're now using it for yeah, no, something other than nope, its divine intent. Nope, it, it really isn't. And, and okay. This is important, and this is kind of, it, it sounds totally backwards. Okay. Because that was my first reaction to it. Yeah. Hey, that's Kevin's microphone falling down. That's that's an there, equipment error. You do, there. We'll fix it. Square it up on the book, and it won't. It, it will continue to fall. It won't. Mine won't fall. There we go. See? So the, the error really is... Um, 
when we when we don't see the Bible as connected to any history or situation, we too think that it can be applied to any situation in any time equally because we kind of see them as these shimmering divine words that just apply. And that then the weird thing is like you were getting at, then you kind of think you're the one that gets control when yeah. they apply. Yep. Right. The yeah, other that, error, that's the lack of the divine part of it. It's yeah. like, well, I decide so, when it applies and when it doesn't. Okay. Right, but that's that's still I, that's still kind of discounting the human reality to it because now you're you're actually in the part of the God too, which is yeah, cool. yeah, you make yourself divine, which is always a bad idea, by the way. <laughs> uh, the other the other side of the coin is to to not believe it's a divine book at all, but just believe it's a bunch of human ideas, and therefore it's myth and legend, and you know maybe an ancient wisdom that doesn't really apply today. So you hear this a lot where. Um, the Bible is seen as an antiquated text. Hmm. Yeah, Paul said that, but you got to understand back then Paul was trapped in this culture that didn't understand the progress that we've gone through. Yeah. Um, of course, he said these things. We've learned a lot That's since old then. That's old-fashioned. We've yeah. progressed since then. Um, you'll hear this a lot in Bible studies, even well-meaning teachers will say, well, you got to understand the culture of the day. <laughs> right, or you got to understand what that meant back then. Which sometimes okay? it's appropriate to say. Sometimes that. it's sometimes helpful. Sometimes it is. But sometimes but. it's actually said to discount the truth of the passage. Yeah, and that's where now we've fallen off the the ditch on the other side, right? Now we're the path into the other ditch. Is we've we've now instead of taking it too divine and saying it can apply everywhere, kind of without context. Now we do the opposite. We say context is everything, and it was simply simply a human idea written in a different time, and therefore there is no application to our time. I had this conversation with my daughter about head coverings in First yes. Corinthians, and I was trying to like thread that line of, yeah, well, so are we required, women required to, which women, which aren't, how does this all don't work? Don't say which and women together, that's bad. Well, yeah, good point. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other issue. Yeah. Um, but, but so, yeah, and if you want to listen to head coverings, I actually just taught that a couple weeks ago. I was wondering but, if, yeah, I think you just covered that on Sunday, didn't you? I did. So you can go to our YouTube channel. A couple channel, Sundays ago. A couple Sundays ago and find that. So so I think that's kind of what we're going to look at is is how to how to kind of try to avoid those errors of kind of seeing this as, as divine words disassociated with any human history or time or setting and therefore equally applicable to every situation no matter what. And that's where you get these kind of these weird quotation <laughs> passages, right? <laughs> That's one kind of error. And then another kind of error is Or the why opposite. Russia is in the book of Revelation. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you get these weird, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Hmm. We all live through that, so that's fun. Right. But the other error then is that this is just an old book and why would you read it? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a, a, a nice, cute history of what people used to think kind of idea. And that's really removing the divine inspiration from the scriptures, that it's... You know, yeah, maybe these were smart religious guys, but you, when we discount the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, then this book becomes conditioned in such a way that the truths must be read kind of with the progression of history in the background instead of reading this as divine revelation. Mm -hmm. So so those are some hermeneutical problems that we're going to try to avoid. And, of course, the positives is to always be reading um, with the goal of Christ, not not trying to import Christ, but but really learning to read Scripture to see Christ, that he is there. Well, I think one of the reasons this, this is important is because just like everybody's always doing theology, anytime you talk about God, you're doing theology, whether you're Christian or not. We're also always doing hermeneutics. Anytime we ask, what does this mean? How do I understand this Bible passage, how do I understand what's going on here? Um, the, the what does this mean being the perennial Lutheran question we have. That's one of right. our favorite questions. Um, that's, her, that's a hermeneutic question. How do I understand this rightly? Uh, and then as we're saying, how do I understand this the way God intended it to be understood? And so when we talk about, as we're, as we're looking around and what might be helpful, well, I'm always asking, how do I understand this correctly? How do I read this correctly? And it, it always comes up in specific situations. And I think that's what we're trying to move into that's a little bit different. Like Kevin said, less theoretical, less academic, and more into, hey, I just encountered this, or I just heard this. Uh, 
Is that the right way to understand it? Is there something off with that? How, how do I learn to do this myself? And I, I bring this up because we actually would love to hear from you, our listeners. What are things you have heard? What are things you are struggling with uh, to understand? Uh, where do you have the question, how does God intend this to be understood? And send those to us because we would love to do episodes covering those kinds of topics, particularly because we know we're actually being helpful to somebody other than <laughs> us thinking thoughts between our own two heads and saying, I think this is a good idea. Um, so we want, we want to get beyond just us thinking it's a good idea to you guys actually sharing your questions with us so that we know we're actually doing something useful and needed. Yeah, so so please, and we mean this, send us Send us things. Questions, um, questions at crucialproductions.org is the email address. We're on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can send us questions there. You can leave comments on the YouTube channel. Most of our podcast episodes I end up converting and putting up on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube listening to this, not really watching because it's just going to be a static image. <laughs> yes. You're not even going to see us. Yeah, you're going to see Thankfully. us. Thankfully. But, good. well, they, they might at one point, though, because we have uh, an idea of at least one video review because it is this video is kind of making the rounds within our own LCMS circles of this is the way to define this particular issue over here, and everybody should watch it because this is what the Bible says. And, well, it might not be, so... Yeah, we might get a little a creative. Little, and yeah, do a little review. Have a review. podcast episode that's actually a video review as well, and that might include our faces Ooh, being on I YouTube. I sure hope not. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just put the two the two Patricks or Donald and Connell. Yeah, our faces. We could use then them. just use that. We'll talk to Hans and see if we can get approval for that. <laughs> so, yeah. So so tune in, and uh, we'll continue to to talk about biblical text and how to. How to read God's word according to God's will. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. And this hasn't really been a crucial conversation. It's really a prelude to other crucial conversations. I can't really end this the way I normally no, do. I can't. But we're looking forward to getting back to podcasting, hopefully being a little more consistent in our posting of said podcasts. So we'll see you guys next time. See ya. You push that button.